Today on Locked On Phoenix Suns, a bunch of videos surfaced this week of Grayson Allen at Duke this offseason looking absolutely ripped. Why that is not just your typical muscle watch video from an offseason, but actually matters for the Suns. Let's go. You are Locked On Suns. Your daily Phoenix Suns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Brendan Clean, your host and a credentialed media member covering the Suns for the past seven seasons. Welcome in. Thank you for making Locked On Suns your first listen to kick off your Wednesday. We march toward September. We march toward training camp. Appreciate you being here hit follow or subscribe if you haven't already we're free and available on all podcast platforms including youtube so just hit that button get a new episode in your feed next week we're back to daily become an everyday or get locked onto the phoenix suns right here with thousands of other suns fans every day today's episode brought to you by the game time app download the game time app create an account use the code locked on nba when you do to get 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply download game time today what time is it game time Grayson Allen, apparently yoked now. Who knew? That's not the only story I'm going to tell you matters more than you think today. We're going to go through three such stories. But Grayson Allen putting on muscle isn't just a cool story, isn't just a fun social media trend, and I don't think it's just a fluke. I don't think it's just, oops, I ate a little too much protein this offseason, or you know, his wife who's expecting maybe I got a little bit of the cravings as well. No, this is real. This matters. And it honestly might tell us that Grayson Allen is more likely to be the starter or maybe not the starter, but a closer, a heavy minutes player than we thought. I know Tyus Jones is starting. I don't think Bradley Beal is going to come off the bench no matter how many times Suns fans might say it. But Allen doing this signals that he knows what he was asked to do with this big three last season was not normal for him, and that bulking up is a big step toward getting better at that role. It's impossible, almost impossible, to overstate how much Grayson Allen's defensive role elevated from two seasons ago with Milwaukee to last season in Phoenix, okay? In Milwaukee, the most common type of player that he was defending was basically spot-up shooters. Pretty, pretty simple defensive role, especially given how Mike Budenholzer likes to play defense, which is not a lot of rotating, not, not a lot of flying around. Grayson Allen, go guard the guy in the corner, we're going to have Brooke Lopez dropped into the paint. We're going to have Giannis as the best help defender maybe in the league. And Drew Holiday is going to be fighting through screens. And we're going to have size at every position. So all we really need you to do, Grayson, is basically to, you know, dig toward the paint to help get some hands in the way of a driver or a big man trying to finish and recover back out if the ball comes toward your shooter or the ball comes back to your side of the court and you got to cover that man. That's it. That's all you got to do. You fast forward to last year, where Grayson Allen, right before the season, is traded to Phoenix, and ends up be kind of proving himself to be basically the fifth best guy on this team, and somebody who just needed to be on the court as much as possible next to the big three and Yusuf Nurkic. Last season, the most common type of player that he defended was not a guy spacing the floor, but instead a primary ball handler. That is the most common player that Grayson Allen defended. He defended point guards more than twice as often, shooting guards a little less, small forwards a little less. He was chasing the best lead creator on opposing teams repeatedly almost every night. And that varied from everybody from, 
yes, smaller players who he didn't necessarily need to bulk up against, like, let's say, Steph Curry, but also Luka Doncic, Anthony Edwards, of course, in the playoffs, which the Suns quickly had to go away from and and figure out a different solution for because Grayson just wasn't going to be the answer and, of course, got hurt. And even, frankly, small guys who you got to be strong against, like, let's say, John Morant, who the Suns, of course, didn't play last year, but you can fill in with any type of example along those lines. The best players in basketball are often the most athletic players in basketball. Let's say Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, as yet another example, right? You have to be able to, to meet their athleticism and their skill with the ball with force, with physicality, with strength, with athleticism of your own. And Grayson Allen just was frankly overmatched a lot of the time. You know, he's only 6'4", which is part of why he's a an imperfect but passable fit on this team. Only has a 6'6 wingspan. And so when I saw those videos coming out of Duke where Grayson's just strolling around like Arnold Schwarzenegger out there, I was like, hey, you know, I actually get it. He, I don't think, I mean... Maybe he slims down a little bit. Maybe he's in the bulking and he'll he'll you know lose three, four, five pounds by camp. But to me, it really matters because it'll make him more equipped to handle those defensive matchups, right? The reason you've been hearing me and, and plenty of other people talk about the fact that Royce O'Neal needs to be on the court more with the big three, why, you know, somebody like Ryan Dunn might be a candidate to, you know, surprise us and get more minutes than we thought why, you know, I'm sitting here still all the time wondering how can the Suns get somebody, even if it's not a great player, a fit like a Grant Williams or or somebody like that that could be available. Dorian Finney-Smith is obviously a name that we think is still on the market. Why, how can they do that? Can they, can they find that guy? It's because that's a really valuable type of player to have and the Suns are just lacking it. If Grayson Allen can at least be a little bit closer of an approximation of that type of player, it will go a long way. So let's play that out again. My most, I'm I'm 80% sure that the starting lineup on opening night will be the big three, Tyus Jones and Yusuf Nurkic. But let's imagine a world where Grayson Allen closes games or maybe in the playoffs, if they aren't able to get that other wing and Ryan Dunn doesn't come along and Josh Okoge still can't do enough on offense and Grayson Allen maybe does start. What I like about him being a little more ready physically for the types of defensive matchups that he's going to need to handle is the trickle-down effect from there, okay? What that means, what that would allow is that the big three don't have to take those on, right? At various points throughout the past season and a half with Booker and Durant together, each of those two and Beal have at different times been the primary best defensive specialist by necessity. You know, Beal guarding Ant at times, guarding Zion at times, guarding whatever fill-in-the-blank great scorer that you want. Booker doing that in the playoffs against the Clippers and against the Nuggets. Durant, mid-season or so, those that stretch of time where he guarded Luka and Kawhi and on down the list. O'Neal can be one of the players that can do this. Heck, even Tyus Jones can be one of the players, depending on the size of the opposing star. You know, Tyus Jones can maybe guard Steph Curry a little bit, can maybe guard a John Morant, a Kyrie Irving a little bit. But if Grayson can do it, more than he even did last year and handle it better, that puts a lot less pressure on the rest of this Suns roster. Bradley Beal can guard bigger players um, that maybe aren't so great. You know, maybe not Zion, but how about like Trey Murphy, you know? Booker can go back to guarding maybe smaller players, which I actually think he's better at, you know, instead of the big wings, maybe, you know, like he guarded Russ in the playoffs last year, he guarded. Jamal Murray at times, obviously Middleton, sort of a big wing, but not a downhill K 
killer, you know, and then Durant can focus on being the help defender that this team really needs a second rim protector, a rebounder, a passing lane steals creator and all these other things. It's not only going to be Grayson. It is still an imperfect fit, even in the Hulk, incredible Hulk yoked up version of Grayson Allen. It's still not the chef's kiss. Perfect example of that defensive player that the sun, we know the Suns need. Ryan Dunn is that. That hasn't changed. But Grayson, being this big, matters. And could have legitimate effect on this team. The other thing that matters is Matt Ishbia in deferential mode. Deferring to his general manager on draft night. That's right. I'll tell you why next. First, today's show brought to you by the Game Time app, the best place to buy any ticket, especially next Monday, September 2nd, Labor Day, 50% off D backs Dodgers. Game Time also has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting picked tickets for your favorite live events even easier. It filters out the fluff. So if you go to that D-backs Dodgers game or you even go to just the homepage and it knows you're in Arizona, it puts the best deals and the best events at the top. So you open it up. It's going to tell you D-backs Dodgers. It's going to tell you that Monday game, and it's going to give you the best deal in the building from the jump. So you don't have to poke around and search and try to find a deal. It puts it right there front and center for you. They also have seat views and all-in pricing so that you know everything about your investment up front. You're not surprised with fees on the checkout list or with a questionable view once you get to the stadium. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A, Locked On NBA for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. And we're back. Let's keep the show rolling here. Another thing that come out in the Suns world this week that matters more than you think. On social media, and I believe on YouTube, the Phoenix Suns put out a behind-the-scenes video from draft night a couple months ago now where... It was kind of that that final couple of minutes leading up to the picks that became Ryan Dunn and Osoe Godaro. So obviously across two days, we got an outfit change in the middle of it. It's like a five-minute video. It's worth watching. It's cool that they put it out. Fans love content like this. Teams that put it out always get, you know, lauded for their transparency and just kind of like lack of, frankly, and it's something I've I've pushed the Suns on for a while. It's a little bit of paranoia, right? Robert Sarver's not the owner anymore, guys. It's It's been good vibes for several years now. Playoff appearance after playoff appearance, franchise win record. Let's not be so paranoid. We don't have to always be so defensive. And this is the type of thing that's good to see. But it was also good to watch, not just from that standpoint, but from getting to see how some of this stuff works behind the scenes, right? So as expected, we know who the players, uh, the the major voices are here, right? It's James Jones. It is Mike Budenholzer, of course. It is Matt Ishbia. And it is Josh Bartlestein, the president of this team. I've told you plenty of here. We've talked a lot about Bartlestein's quotes and comments lately. If you don't think of him as a decision maker here, you're not paying attention. He absolutely is. So this video shows how all these people interact during a big decision moment like the draft. And it was fascinating. It's James Jones calling Calvin Booth from the Nuggets to get the trade from 22 back to 28 and get some of the picks that the Suns were able to get. It's the trade up to 40 from what I believe was 56 in order to get Oso Iguodaro. And that call was Josh Bartlestein. Cool, just cool. And of course, my favorite, Mike, Budenholzer, just absolutely there for the vibes. Just snacking, pumping everybody up. At one point when Bartlestein got the deal done on the second round, uh, Budenholzer shadow boxing like his his chest. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, hilarious. I, I want that energy all season for Mike Budenholzer. I hope that the season is good enough that we get goofball Mike Budenholzer 
as much as we possibly can. But that brings me to the thing that matters here. Matt Ishbia. Deferring, right? And you can't fake this. I mean, like, yes, all these people knew there were cameras, but it also was draft night. Like, there's no there's no uh, BSing here. You know, you're not going to be like, hold on. Let's do one version of the war room last minute decision on this trade for social media, for, for the gram. And let's do one version that is actually real. No, of course not. So, like, it is legit here. And when it really came down to it, when push came to shove, whether, you know, it's like, should we take this deal from this team with this package of picks coming back? Or should we take this one? Or should we wait it out and see if something new comes better comes along? Which player do we really want to take? You know, they say in the video multiple times that Dunn and, and Iguodaro are their guys. But obviously, you know, when everything's on the board, it, it can, you gotta, you gotta make, somebody has to make that final call. You gotta make the final call. And yes, as I've said plenty of times when we're talking about Matt Ishbia, at the end of the day, he gives the final yes or no. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. It is his money at the end of the day. And if you think that any sports team you've ever paid attention to, cared about, covered, watched, anything, does not operate the same way, you are kidding yourself. But there's a line, right? There's a line that is somewhere between, let's see. I guess you might say Jerry Jones, who is literally the general manager of his team, even in, in his elder years. And I guess like maybe the owners of like the Washington Nationals or whatever team is just known for having hands off owners to the point of being almost like well, get the kind of the D back sometimes, right? Where it's like almost to the point of like, are you? Are you here? Knock, knock, knock. Is, is anybody home? Can we actually make a competitive team here? That line is somewhere between those two poles. And it's a lot closer to Jerry Jones. I think that's that's honestly where you run into the most trouble, frankly. Because hands-off means if you hire the right person, they can just do their thing and be great. Hands-on means no matter what, me, guy from the business world who might have some familiarity with sports, but not as nearly as much as the experts, I am doing all of the wheeling and dealing. And, and I, even if I'm not the best equipped or most qualified to be doing that. And I have to admit to you that I do sometimes wonder if Matt Ishbia is doing a little bit too much of that, right? There, this, this franchise, this front office, this whole enter enterprise has changed almost top to bottom since he entered it. And like, that's expected. I mean, again, there's not an inherent issue there. But when you hear about everything down to pitching Tyus Jones to come here on a one-year minimum contract to the Durant and Beal trades to, you know, coaching decisions and everything else, every little piece of reporting and morsel of information that we've gotten since Ishbia bought the team a year and a half ago has been that he was he was everything, the sun and moon of all of it, you know? And so that is, that can be bad. And so it was great to see with this particular video that when it came down to it, Matt Ishbia deferred. He said, James, what do you think? They would ask him, does that sound good? Pull the trigger, green light, let's do it. And Ishbia would put it right back in their hands. What do you want to do? What do you think? And, you know, it's a five minute video, but these types of peaks behind the curtain are few and far between. So we got to use it to inform our opinions of all of this. And I certainly do. I think it matters. And it made me feel a lot better about this whole thing. It made me feel like in particular, James Jones, Jones, which is not a person that Matt Ishbia hired, of course, that they have a real genuinely strong relationship. And Ishbia seems to trust Jones's judgment even on big decisions like draft day. Now, we can all argue about whether James Jones is batting a thousand here. I don't think he is. I think it's quibble with that he's handled some of the things about building this roster out. But 
if he's going to have this job and he is going to be in charge and run this whole thing, then he has to be given the green light to do so and the freedom to make decisions. And at the very least, this showed me that for right now, that is exactly what he has. And until Matt Ishbia decides to change who is the general manager of this team, he should be letting the general manager be the general manager. And at least in that video, that's exactly what it looked like. Last but not least, it's that time of year where we get these polls, these predictions from media, from players, from everybody. And the Suns, well, they're not getting the level of love we have been accustomed to the past several years here in the Valley. Why I think that matters is that it might actually be a good thing. We'll break it down next. First, today's show brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. You know the drill. What makes a championship team is the same thing that also keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed power or style, eBay Motors has you covered. I've told you before, the flap on the interior of the car to block out the sun while you're driving through that windshield or a wheel cover. Those are just the two I've bought because they're little odds and ends that I couldn't find anywhere else at a reasonable price. And look, eBay Motors had it. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. And we're closing it out here Wednesday. One more week till daily. Don't forget to be checking out Locked On NBA. Make it your second listen today to catch up on everything going on around the whole league. I have a feeling they'll talk about this player poll because it is pretty fascinating. It's from, or it is a poll of executives about players and teams in the league. Okay. So, Here's why I find it interesting. First of all, Anthony Edwards got a vote for best player in the NBA. Can we please pump the brakes? I hope that that was Tim Connolly of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Otherwise, it's a complete joke. Um, I understand it's a little bit... For, uh, Western Scout is what it says, so it's not Tim Connolly. Well, I hope it's a Wolves Scout. Otherwise, it's silly. Ant looked great in the playoffs, looked solid in Team USA. Um, did not close every game. I'll... I, maybe I need to remind some people, not not you guys, of course, here in Phoenix, Devin Booker closed a lot of games over Anthony Edwards. Not necessarily telling you for sure that it, that Book is better than Anna. You know, not doing that conversation. But Ant also, after a nice first couple of rounds, got bounced in the conference finals in a not so close series. So let's just chill. You know, let's just chill a little bit. But when I look at the other questions here. MVP, uh, Shea gets a lot of votes. Luka gets a lot of votes. And then you have two each for Ant, Jokic, and Tatum. Tatum getting MVP would be a funny storyline. Scroll down further, and it's teams. Who's going to win each conference? The West, 14 votes for the Thunder, which uh, I don't think that would be my pick right now, necessarily. Dallas, Minnesota. And no votes for either Denver or Phoenix win the title. Eight for the Celtics, seven for the Thunder, one apiece for Dallas, Milwaukee, and Minnesota. I don't think the word Phoenix or the word Suns is here anywhere. Anywhere at all. And here's why I think that matters. It has been a very long time since the Suns could exist absent of constant day-to-day -day looking over their shoulder, hearing about it in the media, drawing the ire of their opponent. You know, they were the 64-win season. Everybody's coming, bringing, bringing their best punch. 
because the Suns are on win streaks and trying to break records and getting the, you know, head toward the number one seed and all that. The following year, yes, they did get hit by injuries, but come playoff time, and, you know, once they got to ramp, basically, it was, well, first of all, it was like, are you really serious? You embarrassed yourselves and your owner's a disgrace. You know, that was that whole season because they had just lost to Dallas and Sarver was on his way out. And then last year, it was like, all right, hot shots. You think you're going to build a team with a big three in an era where the CBA and recent history tells us that's not what you should be doing? Okay. Well, let's see how that goes. And I think teams, you know, felt some kind of way about the Suns. Obviously, the media covered them with a lot of uh, scrutiny and negativity. And so, look, I don't think that Devin Booker is the type of player that needs an extra ounce of motivation. He was playing hard and he was playing, getting better and, and trying to win when he had no support in this organization, no investment new coach every year or less and bad players around him. You know, Kevin Durant is a legend. He just reminded us why for a month in Paris. We don't, we don't need, he doesn't need anything else to get him over the hump in terms of motivation. And Bradley Beal has a lot to prove. And I feel like that should be plenty, you know, the way that, He was hurt again last year. Obviously, he gets a lot of the criticism when it comes to fitting in or fitting out type, type, you know, conversations. And he had a terrible first round and, you know, got fouled out in the last game. He was the most public about his disputes and disagreements with Frank Vogel. So I don't think the big three need much in the way of motivation. And this whole team, frankly, just got spanked in the first round and watched a lot of things around them change and probably know that if they underperform, that change is going to continue. But I do think that there is something that can matter about being a little bit of an underdog, having a chip on your shoulder and needing to kind of remind people why you are special as players, as a team. You know, frankly, Mike Budenholzer fits in that, right? He got, he, he became the first coach to lose as a one seed to an eight seed ever you know, and then had a lot of personal turmoil with, with his family and and some passing of relatives and things. And this is a fresh start for him. You know, he was in Milwaukee for a long time, won a championship there. And this is a fresh start to say, Hey, I'm not, I'm not done here. I have something more to give this league and, and this team that needs a fresh, that needs some leadership and guidance as at the coach position, you know? And so last year was plenty, but I think that this, I think that this constant prediction season that we're in, I'm sure the Suns will take note of it. And I'm sure that it, it'll, it'll be there. It'll be in the back of their minds when, camp hits and you know they they don't go through the motions and not that I'm saying that they didn't put effort in last year at training camp what do I know I'm just saying we're all human you fail you're embarrassed you're criticized publicly and you know ripped apart by fans and media and everybody else and your your opponents you're going to come back with a little something and having this final little reminder heading toward camp here in this part of kind of the, the preview cycle and media cycle of the NBA season is one more example of that, that they can file away and use as a little bit of motivation. So I think it matters. There you go. Three, three different things you might not have even noticed that I think are important. Hit follow or subscribe. If you have not already, we'll be back. Friday with Stephen Perjon Garner. One last time. Next week, big announcement. That's all I'm going to say. Again, little extra encouragement to hit follow or subscribe on your favorite audio platform or YouTube. We're back to daily next week, and there is a big announcement about the future of this show that you're not going to want to miss. I'll talk to you guys. Friday.